I'll talk to you real quick here about 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and the fact that post-trib rapture people, uh, whatever you want to call them, these heretics, uh, they don't really believe the Bible. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I've seen this thing many, many times now where these post-tribbers will come out uh, just ad nauseum and they, just, they say, um, I was raised pre-trib and then I found out the truth and I'm so glad. I'm so happy. I'm no longer pre-trib. I'm no longer deceived. I'm post-trib now. Proud of it. I'm a proud post-tribber. And I've heard them say that. I'm not making that up. And it's just like, wait a second here. Um, do, you, do you people actually read the Bible? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Let's read this. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. What's it talking about? The rapture, obviously. The catching away, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when we get caught up you know, to be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, uh, probably the best known passage on that event. He's writing to the Thessalonians. Okay, His first letter there, he wrote to them about that time, the dead in Christ rising first, and we which are alive and remain. You know, being called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. All right. He's writing and saying, remember that? They are gathering together unto him. Verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Um, here's where the problem comes in at. Post-tribbers that come out with this thing of I was raised pre-trib and now I'm post-trib. When's the last time you've seen them be shaken or troubled in mind? They're all happy. They're smiles, you know. I'm so glad. I'm a proud poster. Why is it that the Thessalonian believers, when they were lied to, I mean, there's two basic ways to interpret this. Let me just show you here. The day of Christ is at hand. Now, most people would say that that's the rapture, okay? Um, and you can make arguments that way. You can also say the day of Christ is the same as the day of the Lord, which is the second coming, which blinks you know, begins that thousand-year millennial kingdom. And again, we're not, we're not going to debate this uh, back and forth on that whole thing. The point that we can get from verse 2 is they're thinking that they missed the rapture. Okay, in other words, if the day of Christ is a reference to the rapture, they're saying it's at hand. You've, In other words, it, it happened. You know, you've already missed it. All right. If it's a reference to the second coming, then they're thinking, oh, great, the day of Christ is at hand. It's coming. And we must have missed the rapture. We're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. But my whole point is they're troubled. You know, shaken in mind. Let me ask you a question, Christian. What if I told you that God 100% showed me proof that we're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble? The Antichrist is going to be showing up in three months. Would it trouble you? Would it shake you up a bit? Would you all of a sudden start looking around at all your possessions and thinking, oh, what am I going to do with all this stuff? And how am I going to be eating in that time? And what am I going to do about my job? And it would shake you up, wouldn't it? And yet you see these posties and they come out and it's just like none of that stuff matters. You know, it's just the Lord's going to just prepare everything and just take care of us as we go through this time period. And I'm like, okay, did you read the book of Revelation? <laughs> you know, where's the Lord taking care of people? He seals the 144,000, but these people, the believers in there, the, the saints in the time of Jacob's trouble, they're getting their heads cut off. They're being hunted down like wild animals and murdered and killed. You know, Jesus Christ talked about having to, short, having to shorten the days so that some flesh could be saved. Where's this, this wonderful, good, nice provision where Christians get to how somehow it's it's not that bad here. It's not that bad. We're in the time of Jacob's trouble, and there's world war, and you know persecution, and famine, and death and hell, and and you know that's just chapter six of Revelation. There's all this other stuff happening, and, but it's not that bad. <laughs> I just find that very interesting, and I find it interesting too that these guys, a lot of these uh, post-trib rapture preachers, have no problem at all with airport security. You know. They're flying all over the place. They're going here. They're going there. You know, um, I've flown in airports before, but when they kicked in all, all this TSA stuff and these naked body scanners and they're putting their hands down your pants and all this other stuff, searching for weapons and everything else, I said, I'm not flying again. 
Um, nobody has a right to search me that way, all right? Unless I've committed a crime and I'm standing there with a smoking gun or something, the police can come, okay, you proved something. But you don't get to search me when I'm just trying to fly someplace or whatever. If I need to go somewhere, I'm driving. I don't fly. And yet you see these post-trib rapture preachers, they're flying all the time. No problem at all with airport security. They go through it all the time. But don't you worry, because when the Mark of the Beast shows up, they're going to boldly stand up and say, I refuse to take the mark. That's an invasion of my liberties and my rights as a Christian. You will not get me to take the mark. If they're submitting to airport security right now, what makes you think that when the mark of the beast shows up, they're going to all of a sudden get brave and they're going to stand against it? They're smiling about going into the time. They're not troubled. They're not shaken in mind. And when it comes to in privacy invasion and things like this and going along with, with systems that are that are corrupt, I believe, it's just like, oh, no problem. They're happy. What are we dealing with? We're dealing with fakes. That's what you're dealing with. I'll tell you what, the, the rapture issue, that people, oh, it's, it's not a salvific issue or something. It's not a big issue. Oh, it's very, very big. It's the completion of your salvation, Christian. The redemption of the purchased possession, Ephesians chapter 1. Without a rapture, you're going to go into a time period where you're going to have to face God's judgment and God's wrath along with the lost world that's rejected Jesus Christ. That's why years and years ago, I preached a sermon called The False God of Post-Trib Christians. And you know, when you get right down to it, they're dealing with a God that is far into Scripture. They're dealing with a God that punishes the just and the wicked together. It's a problem.